Papa Sen was raised in a village in Senegal, where cooperating was a natural way of life. As a young Boy Scout, he carried around a knotted handkerchief that was untied each night to celebrate good deeds and acts of cooperation. This had a profound effect on Papa. Pop was lucky in that his father encouraged him to attend school. He moved to Dakar to further his studies and noticed that many from rural areas could often find work but had no place to live. Pop set out to solve the problem. He and several friends pooled their resources, purchased land, divided it into lots and built houses. This new housing co-op was transformative for many rural Senegalese people, and young Pop's leadership made it happen. In 1967, Pop was hired as the head of accounting for a regional cooperative, where he once again made his mark. He translated the French accounting system into local languages to make it accessible. This was highly innovative at the time, and created a hunger for literacy training at the local level. 1967 was also the year Papa met his lifelong sweetheart and wife, Yvonne. The two were married in 1973 and have four daughters, Junya, Kumba, Sukna, and Abby. They also have five grandchildren. Pop knew he had a calling, so in 1975, he left his job to study co-ops at the National School of Applied Economics. He later taught at the Cooperative College of this national school. From there, he moved to Paris in 1979 to do his doctoral dissertation. Two years later, he met NCBA CLUSA employee Jim Alrutz while conducting a seminar on cooperatives in Rwanda. When Jim asked Pop to consult on a CLUSA project, a beautiful partnership was born. Pop started out as a consultant and trainer and soon became a driving force behind the successful CLUSA approach. In 1984, Pop was asked to design the Niger program and he agreed. Right from the start, Pop knew that if the work was to be successful, the inspiration needed to begin in the village. He insisted upon the fundamental belief that the farmer was equal in intelligence to the development worker, and that developers were there to help facilitate and to empower local people to be the drivers of their own businesses, organizations, and lives. This was a novel approach, and it was extremely successful. This community-based methodology, coined the CLUSA approach, took root and has since been used all over Africa and Central America to impact thousands of rural communities. Examples of how Pop successfully used this approach abound. In Benin, he led a project to establish community forest management commissions resulting in 1,800 new jobs, increased tax revenue from thriving businesses, and an 83% reduction in forest fires. Today, the World Bank uses this model for their natural resources management efforts. In Mali, he helped cotton producers organize and increase their bargaining power, leading to profitable businesses that reinvested in their own communities. In Burkina Faso, he helped improve healthcare by designing and providing training for locals to create and manage their own village health management committees. With citizen input, rules and operations of the public clinics were changed and use by the public increased significantly. He also helped USAID establish the Iwaku Cooperative Training and Research Center in Kigali, Rwanda to provide training and support services for regional cooperative managers in Rwanda and nearby countries. In 2001, Pop initiated the Government Accountability Improves Trust, or GATE project, in Ghana. By organizing civic organizations around cooperative principles to interact with government officials, citizens transformed their traditionally passive roles to one of active ownership to provide public services. The impact was impressive. 
and Pop's reach has gone beyond the specific projects on which he has worked. Of course, the widespread use of the Clusa approach is a prime example, but he has also written three books, consulted with numerous international NGOs, and trained thousands of farmers, community leaders, Clusa staff, and local governments in business and governance skills. He also played a major role in the revision of cooperative laws and regulations in Niger, Ghana, Mali, and other countries, resulting in far less government interference in cooperative business operations. He was even chosen by the U.S. government in 2013 to meet personally with President Obama to speak about his work with NCBA Clusa's Feed the Future Food Security Project in Senegal, which aims to improve nutrition and agriculture productivity among the most vulnerable rural populations. Papa Sen is a deeply principled man who always lives out his ethics. He humbly serves others and in so doing has endeared himself to everyone who has ever worked with him and become their mentor and hero. For more than 30 years, Papa has used cooperative principles to empower others. His life's work has helped improve millions of people's lives around the world. Tonight, we are humbled to honor Papa Sen with induction into the Cooperative Hall of Fame.